All right, in uh, this video, I'm going to show you uh, part of the conversion of my mechanical power hammer into a pneumatic power hammer. And that's, uh, I'm going to show some of the steps I uh, took to convert the old mechanical hammer into a, a newer, better hammer, in my opinion. Um, this is my first video, first editing experience. Please forgive some of the rough editing. Anyway, I'll do the best I can. Um, if you have questions, I can go back over things in another video. But this is sort of just going to show you some of the steps that I took to uh, put together the hammer and try to make it work as best I can. And um, I'll follow it up with more videos in the future. Um, hopefully better put together. Um, I'm a little new at this editing thing, so please forgive me again. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I'll show you what's uh, what's involved, some of the stuff that you have to take into account, you know, this and that, whatever it is. I'll put it in the video as best I can. I'll probably forget steps, um, but that's all part of the learning curve, you know. It's all new to me, editing, pneumatics, the whole thing, but it's fun. It's fun to do something new, so um, let's get at it. So what I'm doing here is making a bus bar. This will be for the, <clears throat> the hot side of the AC coming in. This is an AC relay and uh, it's adjustable here for the timing. It's just pretty much just a flip-flop relay. Uh, it has a number of different modes that you can do and we'll go through that later. But um, I like this dial where you can just kind of dial it into whatever you whatever seems right for your particular setup as far as your repetitions. This is going to be for the a repetitive function for the, the RAM to go up and down. So this is the basic relay and this is the socket that it goes into. fits right in there. And this socket gets bolted down here. We'll make a couple of bus bars, one for the hot and one for the neutral. And then they'll connect into the um, the screw down terminals on this uh, relay mount. So what I'm doing now is I'm just making a couple of buses. That's I just make a you know a bunch of little little pieces like this, and then <clears throat> you just sort of twist them together best you can so that they don't come apart, and stick them in there. tricky but not too bad. And then you just screw them down. And then this was the last one. Make sure you have all your screws up before you start this or you start hitting your screws which this one's not all the way up. comes down and clamps it. That way I can mount that in there and I, everything that needs power I can just I can put the power into here and it will come all the way you know just be distributed. It's just a bus bar. This distributes all the, the AC and I'm going to do the same thing with this one and this will be the neutral bus. So pretty much the same thing. So here's the basic box. You can see the the two buses here, so I can connect wires in and out of here. And then I'll go over to here. This will be connected down here at this point. And then this will come through here. Now this is going to come through the top of this. So this will fit through the top of this. So that I'll have control of it. These are the function switches here. Got some indicators. And this will be my two output lights. And they'll, they'll light up when uh, one side of the relay is energized. Um, so I can see, you know, how they're flashing. I've got an on and off button here for power and a fuse just to protect the thing. 
and this is the start and the reset button. They're just momentary buttons. So that's part of the experiment. I'm going to see how this thing works. I've never worked with one of these type of timers before. So I'm going to experiment and just watch the light so I don't have to do it with the equipment. <clears throat> It'll give me an indication also um, if something screws up. I can see if the lights are still flickering. I'll know it's in the in the relay. And um, so I'm going to set all that up. And this is the pneumatic switch that I'm going to be using. This is a, got two relays here. One for one direction, one for the other direction. You can buy them with just one relay and a spring, but I wanted a little more positive um, control of the plunger that goes through there that makes the changes between these two outputs. Here's the input, these are the two outputs. It also has a couple of exhaust ports down here, which just exhaust the air from the, the side of the cylinder that's no longer being used. Um, so this is going to be the, the controller for the air, which will then be hooked up into this relay. So that's how that's going to work. Um, I also got this mounted on a piece of wood because it's nice to be able to screw everything into this. It's just a plastic box. You can screw it into wood and then mount the wood on whatever you want. So that's, that's kind of how that works. So I also have this timing chart. <clears throat> this they, they send along a uh, Let's see if you can see it a little bit better. Anyway, this is the one I'm dealing with right here. And it shows you the pinout. And the pinout also comes out on this. This has little numbers next to all the studs. And so you can kind of figure out what you're doing. You know, here's the, the reset, the start, the gate I'm not using. Uh, NCNO, that if you're not familiar with uh, uh, relay lingo, that's uh, normally open, normally closed. So when the thing's powered down, there's one side of the relay that's normally closed. So you have to take that into account. Actually, there's two relays in here. It's a double pull, double throw. So I can use both of those. Um, then there's the common. and So I'll, I'll make a diagram of how I hooked it up after I'm done. But this will just kind of give me a an easy way to see what I'm doing while I'm, while I'm putting it together so I don't get too confused which is not hard for me to do. So I'm just hooking up a couple of the lights here. I got a common because they're both AC lights so that will go over the neutral and then this will go to the outputs of um, one side of, of each switch. Just got to put some extensions on them because they're not quite long enough to reach. So what I do is I just put a little piece of it. This is just 20 gauge wire. Nothing is high powered in here. It's all low amperage. So you can use fairly small wire. You don't have to worry about it. It's good to tin the end first. These are already pre-tinned. So just get a little extra solder on there. Get it over here. And just melt them together. And that's good enough. blob of solder on the end of your gun, your iron, just blob them together. Mechanical twist them together is always a better solder joint but this is plenty good. I mean this is not going anywhere. And it's easier to put a little piece of heat shrink on it so it doesn't short anything out.
this is just rough wiring. I haven't sized it. I'll wait till everything gets together and then I'll size it. That's all there is to it. Let's see. I'm going to make some extensions for these. It should be pretty much the same thing, only I'm going to use some crimp connectors because these are these kind of lugs. I'm using red for neutral instead of white just because I don't have any white. I got some white, but it's huge and I don't want to use it. So this is my, you can use any color you want just as long as you keep it straight. Let's see. Same kind of deal. Pick off a little bit. Strip it. This little sucker on there. As I see a little nub sticking out the end, I don't know if you can see that, but you always want to crimp it right at the edge. That's where the metal is. Back here it's just plastic and if you crimp it, it's not going to do anything. So you want to crimp it right up close to the top. And then that fits right into here. Now this is all AC, so you don't have to worry about polarity. You can stick either one on either side and it's still going to work. So I'll do that for four more and then I'll get back to you. So here's the box. It's uh, pretty well wired up. Uh, you can see the power is coming in here. Got all these wired up down to the socket. So just a matter of getting all the right wires to the right pins on the on the socket so then this sort of all just sort of fits right down in here get a few of the wires away from the, from the base this has a snap in should snap in there we go and then the last step is just to stick this thing in here it has an alignment pin, so you got to get it right in the right place. There. So it's ready to go. We'll give it a test um, when I checked it out a little bit. I'll show you how it works, and um, we'll go from there. Okay, I got this thing wired up. Um, few little troubles with the lights but it was just the wrong wiring so this is the this thing has four modes and the modes are uh, delayed power up where are they oh yeah on delay one shot flicker signal off delay so I don't think I really need any of those particular ones unless I wanted to do a one shot it's a nice has a nice one shot you can just hit it once and it'll just come down once that might be good but I think probably for this application I'll use the the flicker mode which is here now the mode switch for this is right up here and you just change it with a little screwdriver you can change it to flicker mode one shot you gotta power it down when you change it or else it won't change. Um, this is the range scale here, which changes the, the numbers, the range. They just come in different. 
Um, this is on 0.1 seconds is the range. So whatever the numbers mean, I'm not really sure. But I'll show you kind of how the flicker mode works. Powered up. You can just see it just flickers back and forth. This would be one. Each one of those lights would go to one of these two um, uh, solenoids, which would be pulling in and pushing, or actually they would, both would, this would pull and then this would pull it back and then this would pull. So it would be a, a back and forth between these two outputs with the input here. So this indicates the speed of that uh, reciprocation. Now if I want to stop this, I can just hit the reset button. The reset button will just stop it. So you can have a remote reset button. And you want it to go again and just keep going. So you can have an on-off switch for this thing somewhere and just turn it off. And it'll just it'll it'll always go if this is your your up position. You'd want this in your up position, this particular side of the relay. Because then it would go back up and it would just wait to go to start again. And you can start it again by releasing it. The uh, start button doesn't have anything to do with this one. So then you can change the speed, you know, just by that, by however much you want. Whatever your machine runs, whatever speed your machine runs best at, you, know, you can have a slow, you can slow it down, I mean, whatever you want. Speed it up. That's too fast for most machines because they're not going to respond that way. Just the inertia is going to be too much. I'm thinking somewhere around the middle. I don't know. Whatever, whatever works for your particular machine. I'll have to uh, explore over here and, and see what uh, see what the stroke length and the weight and everything else and how that responds and how quickly it responds. So I'll I'll just sort of leave it as slow right now. I think most machines could do that rate. But that's the nice thing about having an adjustment is you can adjust it to whatever you want. And also having a stop button. So it sort of works as advertised. Um, the only other interesting one mode that I found was the one shot. It's the OS mode one shot. So if you turn it on. There we go. Now, remember this one is going to be your your up uh, solenoid. So it starts up. You want it to start up. You don't want to start down. So let's see. Is it this one? No, it's this one. Yeah. It'll just do it once. So if you had a, a foot pedal or something, you just wanted one, one particular time, you could just hit it once and it'll just do it one for whatever the time frame of this thing is. Now if I want to increase it, you can see how the lag was more. So you can you can time how how fast your your RAM goes down. You want to do it real fast? That's what you can do. So that's an interesting uh, feature of this particular relay. Anyway, this thing's fairly simple. Um, this is just a demo box to see what it does. Um, I'm going to have to wire it up to the to the uh, the hammer itself and uh, see how it operates. Now, what I plan to do was to use this up and down, plus another valve downstream to regulate the flow of the uh, the gas. I don't have that valve yet. So what I'm going to do now is I'll regulate the flow with something else. I'll clue something together. I'll get a little valve or something and see what I can find. But um, so I'll go ahead and see if I can't hook that up and goof around with it, and then um, we'll see that in the next video.